Welcome to Irie AT, Braille and Innovation. Welcome back to the Tiger Software Suite Tutorials. In Tutorial 10, we will be providing an overview of the Tiger Designer tools and functions. All right, guys, so the first thing you're going to want to do is, of course, make sure that you have the Tiger Software Suite software installed on your PC. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and select the link in the video. Once you've done that, go ahead and open it up on your PC. I'm going to go ahead and type out Tiger in my search bar. Oh, and you'll notice it pops up rather quickly. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Here we go. And you'll notice when you fire up Tiger Designer here that you just get the Tiger Designer splash screen and there's not much you can really do. There's only two icons that you can actually access, one being create a new document, the second being open an existing document. You will also notice that the drop downs, the menu drop downs above, uh, most of them are grayed out up there and that's due to us not having a document open just yet. There's two ways you can open a document. You can either open an existing document or you can just create a new document. We're gonna go ahead and just create a new document today. I'm gonna go ahead and select that option of course, you can also select it by the file dropdown and hitting the new option within there. Once you do that, it'll open up the new document dialog box in which you can select your paper size. We're going to go ahead and select Braille paper, our 11 and a half by 11 inch, which is probably our standard Braille paper size here. Once I do that, you'll notice that the page width and page height edit field boxes auto fill with the correct paper sizes for us or correct measurements. We're gonna go ahead and select our printer model. You have a few different options in here. We're gonna go ahead and select our Braille track and Braille sheet today. And then you also have the page type dropdown within here. And the only option within there is gonna be the Tiger Plus option. So that's gonna be what we select today. Once I hit okay, you'll notice we get a blank canvas here, as well as a few icons in the upper left-hand corner, which are some of the tools and features within the software. And you'll also notice that the menu dropdowns, some of the tools and features are no longer grayed out. And that's again, because we have a document open. All right, so let's cover some of the tools right here, some of the icons. The first few that you'll notice are what they call set drawing color. And everywhere from set drawing color zero set drawing color one all the way up to seven. And then they have drawing color braille, which is gonna be for your standard braille characters. And what these colors represent are your variable dot heights, which you can achieve with the Irie embossers. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select a dot height and then I select one of my tools over here and then it will apply that dot height for that specific tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and select drawing color six or dot height six. Then I'm gonna select my pen or pencil tool up here in the toolbar. Then I'm gonna bring my cursor down to my canvas and I'm gonna left click with my mouse and drag. And you'll notice that I get some free handed dots on the canvas. Now, if I want a different dot height, what I'm gonna do is come over to the set drawing colors and I'm gonna select a lower drawing color. So we previously selected drawing color six. Why don't we go ahead and select drawing color three. Now I'm gonna bring my cursor over to my canvas, left click and drag, and you'll notice that my dots are a much lighter shade. They're actually a gray, they're not black. And what that indicates is a lower dot height. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select another height. Let's go with seven. And we're gonna move on to the next tool, just so it shows up a bit better for you. The next tool within the toolbar is gonna to be the paintbrush tool. When I select that tool, I'm gonna to bring my cursor over to my canvas and left click and drag once again with my mouse. And what that does is it gives me a line, if you will, a very thick line with multiple dots. The dots in the middle of the line being a higher dot height, and the dots on the outer edges of the line are at a lower dot height, kind of giving you the interpretation of a paintbrush, if you will. The next tool is just your straight line tool. And again, we're just gonna come down to our canvas, left click and drag with our mouse and release. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up real quick. And an easy way to do that is just by hitting Control Z for undo. And go ahead and hit it again a few more times. There we go. Now the next tool within the toolbar is your rectangle tool. And I'm gonna select that tool. And again, left click with my mouse and drag. The next tool within the toolbar is what they call a fill rectangle tool. And all that is is a rectangle that has a pre-built pattern within it. And I'm gonna left click after selecting the tool on my canvas and drag. And there you go. You have a rectangle with a pattern. Go ahead and clean these up with Control Z. The next tool within the toolbar is the draw oval tool. 
And again, I'm just gonna select that tool, come down to my canvas with my cursor, left click and drag, and there you go, we have an oval. The following tool within the toolbar is just the fill oval tool. And it's similar to the fill rectangle tool. And again, I'm gonna left click and drag, and we get an oval with a pattern. All right, so the next tool within the toolbar is called the flood fill tool. And what that does is that will allow you to apply a pattern to any closed shape that you have down here within your canvas. And so if I just select it, bring my cursor down within our oval that we have that does not have a pattern within it, I'm gonna left click and boom, it just adds a pattern to our oval. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control Z real quick to remove that. The next tool is important because it's the pattern fill tool and that will allow you to change your patterns for the flood fill tool that we just used. And when I select the pattern fill, I get a pattern editor dialog box. And that allows me to change my patterns for my flood fill. So we had ex excitement selected. Let's try peace, see how that works out. I'm gonna select that option, hit okay. Move my cursor within my closed shape, left click, we have a bit of a different pattern in our oval. The next tool is the Select Rectangle tool, and this does two different things. By left-clicking and dragging over an existing piece of the graphic, it's going to lay a rectangle out there, and it's transparent. So I can do two things. If I left-click with my mouse and drag, it's going to make a copy of whatever piece of my graphic I have within that rectangle. The other thing that it does is it also allow you to erase. So I'm going to left-click and drag over a piece of my oval. Let's say we want to remove it. Now I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard and boom, there you go. Now the final tool within the toolbar is your braille label tool. And that's pretty simple. I'm going to select the tool, bring my cursor down to my canvas, then I'm going to left click and then it will allow me to add a braille label. And I can just type it out on my keyboard. Select OK. All right, there you go. Now that everything looks good in our graphic, go ahead and go up to file. Go to print, make sure that your IRA embosser is selected, hit print, and there you go, folks. Thanks for watching Tiger Software Suite Tutorial 10. Don't forget to like our videos and make sure to hit that bell notification to keep up to date on our latest videos and content.